<laughs> Our next uh, comedian talking about TV and so on has been on Law and Order. He was rapist number four. Give it up for Roman Black. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming out. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, I enjoy smoking drugs and um, all types of other real shit. Um, I consider myself a decent human being with good morals and values. However, every now and then I run into a motherfucker that really makes me forget what kind of decent human being I am. So, uh, when I was younger I used to work in a pizzeria and uh, this customer would always order a large order, but he was such a dick, you know? Every time he would come deliver to him, he would be mean and rude and, uh, you know, throw 50 cents in your face. Just completely uncalled for shit. Like, really deserves everything that's coming to him. So, one day he calls and I decide I'm gonna fuck him over. So, on the way there, I'm, uh, I'm driving his food and I'm like, all right, what can I do to this guy? I got it. I'm gonna put my dick in his food. So, he deserves it. I'm telling you, he fucking deserves it. So, I pull over, I answer it, I whip it out, and I reach for the closest piece of food next to me, which happens to be a calzone. So, I pick it up, I unwrap it just a little bit, and proceed to rub it on my dick. Uh, it takes a few seconds to realize that it's really fucking hot. I have a mark till this day, man. So, every time, you know, every now and then I think about it and I'm like, I, I don't really know for one that exchange, you know? And, uh, you know, I was thinking about it the other day and I'm like, fuck, he, he ordered a shitload of food. Maybe the calzone wasn't for him. Maybe it was for his little kids or wife or something like that. And I started feeling bad. And I'm like, no, fuck that. He's an asshole. His family are probably assholes. So they all deserve whatever's coming to them. Although, every now I think about it and, um, you know, I kind of wish he would have ordered a nice cold Caesar salad. <laughs> it would have been less painful. I think it would have been a lot better for me. Um, I enjoy watching people pass out while standing. Uh, if, if you ever get to see a person pass out while standing and smoking weed, it's the most beautiful, rarest thing in life that you, I've seen it twice in my life. If you ever get the opportunity, there's a moment in time where you see the person start rocking back and forth. Now, you have an opportunity to approach them and stop this. Don't do that. Don't fuck that. Let it happen. Trust me, let it happen. This is one of life's most beautiful things. You don't want to miss out on this shit. What else? Um, went to an orgy about uh, a year ago. I was sitting at home and I'm like, what kind of fun are people doing that I'm not having, you know? So I'm a fucking orgy. Go online, do my research. I didn't do my research. The first thing I found, I'm like, fuck it, I'm going. <laughs> so, I get high, I drink a little, I'm like, all right, I'm ready, let's go. So I fucking, somewhere in the city, I'm not gonna tell you where. Uh, I get there, right, and I'm all nervous, I don't know what's going on, but I'm curious. So, I get there, and this huge black guy is standing there, and he's like, password. And I'm like, all right, I'll tell him the password, move into the next place. Next place is like, entry fee. Give him the entry fee, password. Give him the password, walk in. Now, when I walk in, it's a small room, a table, and a scandalously dressed woman. She's like, take off all your clothes, put it in a garbage bag, give it to me, and then you can go into the party. <laughs> I'm standing around like, fuck, am I getting robbed? What's going on? <laughs> but, you know, I'm curious, and fuck it, if that's how it has to be, that's how it has to be. So, Put my clothes in the fucking garbage bag, I give it to her, she let me walk through. I walk through, everybody's naked, good guy to girl ratio, and uh, you know they start showing me around. This is the sex room, this is the swing room, this is the massage room, this is the bar, and it, the bar had like some kind of jungle juice or something in it. So, you know, I look around and I'm like, fuck, I'm the only white guy there. Everybody's black. <laughs> so I'm like, I should have probably researched it a little bit more. <laughs> I, I, I started feeling a little uncomfortable because, you know, all these black guys walking around tripping over each other's dicks and shit. <laughs> and, you know, I'm just standing there. I, I started feeling a little comfortable when somebody tripped over mine. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> it was fun. Um, I have a staring problem. 
Right? <laughs> a lot of shit on trains. Because I just, I just gawk. I'm sitting there, I'm gawking at people. I don't know I'm doing it. It's a fucking problem. So, don't interrupt. <laughs> now, I got into a lot of shit for that, and I can tell you a lot of stories, but no time. What else? Um, the weather stole my favorite slippers the other day. Can't talk about that either. They were, they were important to me. Um, let's see. Let's see here. Um, Oh, I used to go to a lot of comedy shows, and I hate, I hate, and I've seen it done here already, when people, comedians, they get in trouble or something, and they start asking uh, the audience, where, where are you from, sir? Where are you from, man? <laughs> and speaking as an audience member, I don't give a fuck where anybody's from. Tell me a fucking joke, tell me a fucking story, or get the fuck off stage. It's simply from an audience perspective. Um, what else? Tried to join a cult not too long ago. Um, I was looking for a job and I come across this thing online. It's like, be the right hand man of a leader of a new social movement. And when you really read more about it, it's a, it's a fucking cult. There's no arguing about it, it's a fucking cult. But it was interesting, so I'm like, let me see what's going on. I look up their philosophies, their whole thing is people shouldn't work that much in life. And I'm like, hey, you know, I'm, I can do that. Like, that's, you know, that's me and shit. So I'm like, all right, and I read more about it. The guy makes a lot of sense, man. So I'm like, fuck it, I'll move in over there and live in the cold. At least I'll have a story out of it. I write him a beautiful essay. I send him, I'm like, I'm willing to do whatever it takes for the cause. So they write me a letter back saying, no, your, um, your email was very nice and beautiful. And it seems like you put in a lot of work into that. And we're not about that. <laughs> so, I don't know, man. You couldn't get that job either. Looks like I'm doing comedy now. Um, yeah, that's, that's about all I got, Peter. There's nothing else written here. <laughs> Right, let's hear it for our guy here. Yeah. All right. Give it up.